Camista Matarola Tazza Tazza de Luna Dress La Matarola Jananza Matarola My art has been a war against war and it's taken me to Nicaragua and the Philippines, Somalia, Rwanda, Iraq, Afghanistan, Northern Ireland, South Africa, Cambodia, more wars than I can remember. And uh, it's been like a record of what's happened in my lifetime in terms of human conflict. I believe it's the job of an artist to combat the destructive forces in human nature. And the best way to do that is by being actually at the front line and creating in the face of it. So these are monkeys in a jungle. And the ones at the top are victorious. They, they've got their swords and they're smirking and they're like soldiers that won a victory. And down below are the, the dead and wounded from their battle and there are other monkeys. And it's saying, well, we'll never leave the jungle until we stop doing war. And so I've called it evolution. I just hope that humanity can evolve enough to leave the jungle. I've kept my work consistently on the theme of social justice and humanity and against war. Um, but that's from someone who comes from a sensibility, not like a communist artist who's come through this via social realism, but it was just me realising that as a painter, um, the minimalist artist, the abstract artist, took the medium to its end. And, uh, but it still meant, I still felt that art should be addressing human problems, human concerns, and it should be about um, what it is to be human. This is The Preacher. Uh, I did this work after coming back from Rwanda in 1995. Uh, thousands of people were killed in a place called Kabea. It was a Catholic church and people would come there for protection. They thought they'd be protect protected because it was a sacred place. And uh, slaughter was going on with machetes. And when something like that's happening, people lose their dignity. They bury themselves into the mud and try to hide anything to escape being killed. But I came to one area where it was a little bit smoky and there was this man, this extraordinary man, reading, I call him the preacher, to a congregation, to the people around him, to his flock. He's reading the Sermon on the Mount from the New Testament and people were hallelujahing, you know, they were with him. And uh, I came up to him and I said, look, should I stay? Do you think if I'm here, they won't come in and kill you? And he said, no, they'll kill you as well. And he had some young boys and said, can you try and get them out? And I did. I got them and hid them under a UN truck. When I came back, he and the whole con congregation had been killed. But what he'd done was give them back their dignity and just the bravest man I've ever met. Before I can paint something I have to experience this reality really deeply. I couldn't do this picture of monkeys if I hadn't been living and playing with monkeys for years at the Yellow House and observing them. I'm only now feel I've observed them enough to do this picture. I couldn't just go to a zoo and take some photographs and come home and you know I wouldn't feel like I owned them. Like uh, these monkeys uh, I know they feel their touch, I've cleaned them, I've washed them, I've fed them and uh, they've become part of me and that's why I can draw them and bring them to life. Uh, it's the same with all my subjects. Uh, I, I need to go to Afghanistan or Iraq or Nicaragua or whatever war that I'm in and work from the reality of the place. Then I feel that I've got an ownership and usually I've got to be with a subject for a long while before I can begin to make a painting. Um, I don't feel that I'm worthy of it or something. I'm not close enough to it. I, I haven't made it part of myself. You know, it's got to have become part of myself before I can draw it and make a picture out of it. This painting, The Yellow Room, uh, was a result of a drawing I did in Herat back in 1999 in Afghanistan. And I've been t getting the stories of landmine victims. And they kept on saying, have you seen the boy? Finally, it was like a mythical character and I came into this room and it was very dark and his mother was there and he was like a skeleton and she was, you know, putting warm water on his body and trying to soothe his pain. And he had uh, been out with his brother, the donkey, with their harvest on, on the back of the donkey and the donkey was blown up, his brother killed, he was thrown through the air and his intestines exploded. 
So he'd lost all of his internal stomach organs. And this was something like six or more weeks after that he was still alive. It was impossible that he could be alive. Uh, any doctor will tell you that. But he was staying alive for his mother. She'd lost her husband, his brother, everything. And he was all that she had. And you had the sense of his soul fluttering above his body, a strange kind of yellow light. It wasn't as defined as this, but there's a sense that his soul was moving between his body and wanting to get out the door. And I, I say that this was a room where the doorway between this world and the next was wide open. Uh, there's a huge conceptual element to what I do as well. Um, my most important work, I believe, is creating, originally helping to create the Yellow House in King's Cross in Sydney, but later to create the Yellow House that I'm going back to now in Afghanistan. Um, it's a country where the Taliban and um, people who support them banned all of art, film, photography, um, dancing, acting, everything creative. They believe that all thought and focus should be on what's in the Quran. It was the one and only book and the one and only source of inspiration. As a result, there, where I'm in Jalalabad, there are no art schools, no galleries, no theatres, no cinemas. And so I've established the Yellow House where we've, we're providing all of that. We're giving workshops for children, including girls. We're creating films in Pashto language. We've got an editing suite. And um, people come there to paint. And we have the Secret Garden Cafe, which is the only place in Jalalabad where um, men and women can, or girls and boys can meet. Uh, women in Jalalabad are not allowed to go to restaurants or visit a video store. Um, they're only allowed to go to the market and buy food. And then they've got to be fully covered in a burqa. This is a big drawing I did in Iraq. Uh, and it's of the bull ring, the wrap contest ring at Uday's ruined palace, where American soldiers were in occupation. And Elliot Lovett here was the greatest freestyle rapper in the American army. And he'd demolish anyone who came into battle. They call it battle. And uh, soldiers would admit that they weren't frightened to go to war, but it was terrifying to think that they could come into one of these rap contests and be shown to be an idiot, a fool, someone who can't use words. A lot of the words are derogatory. And at the time, Elliot, who was the rap champion, said, oh, George, uh, Iraq is much safer than um, Miami, where I come from, Brown Sub. And I saw that as a challenge. And I followed him back to America. And I discovered Brown Sub, that there's a side of America we don't know about it. And while I was making the film Rampage, his brother was murdered in, in gang warfare. place where, uh, like, America's been at war in Afghanistan now for like 14 to 15 years, so that's a big one. So I'm based, I've got a house in Jalalabad and I'm based there. And uh, they call me Bubba George, not Bubba Gump, but Bubba George. I've become the wise old man of Jalalabad, you know, with my beard and stuff. And um, Is that why you grew it, to convince yeah, the yeah, you gotta, that you were wise? For the Taliban to make friends with you, you've got to be able to, they've got to be able to hold your beard like that, you yeah. know, like... Can I interrupt you? That's what I do for a living. But I, you just said, you know, you're close to the Taliban. You just yeah. dropped it, just threw it away. Well, you're why not? The Taliban, you know. I was close to the PLO once, so what's so smart about well, that? Well, I like, I've what, been what, close to PLO as well. There aren't many people. No, no, no. Well, we've you, got, you if, you, if you Google, the meanest guy in the world since bin Laden's gone is Mullah Haqqani. And uh, we always feared that because we're running an art centre in, in Afghanistan, in the Yellow House, that one night we've got a shotgun against every wall that the Taliban had come in and kill us. And uh, Nihar's here somewhere. You've, you've, you've known the fear, haven't you, darling? Nihar lives at the Yellow House. She's got a Yellow House outfit on. She just flew back from Afghanistan tonight to be here. 
Anyway, we're nervous and finally we got the head of the Taliban, Mullah Haqqani, to come and he's a regular guest now, except that when he talks about Sharia law, our monkeys start banging their water bowls together. <laughs> Is that what that's all about? Yeah, they're the mon well that's because I'm the only one who feeds and looks after the monkeys and I've been observing them, so I thought I might make something out of them, you know? You should explain to people, I only found this out myself tonight when we arrived, that George just tossed this together in the last couple of days. Two, last two afternoons, yeah. It's evolution. It's what, what all the work's about is that we're not going to come out of the jungle until we stop doing war. Like, we're not going to be fully evolved. So this is called evolution. My monkeys in their cages in Jalalabad are more advanced than us because they're not going to war. So that's what it's about.